Good morning on this 13th day of March and welcome to the Daily Post with some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will help you through the day and challenge you perhaps. The scripture to start is from the second epistle to the Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Praise the Lord for that. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, the target is Deuteronomy chapters 19, 20 and 21 and Mark chapter 13 verses 21 to 37. The facts of the day, if knowledge can create problems, it is not through ignorance that we can solve them. It is easier to fight for one's principles than it is to live up to them. Also true. Evangelism is nothing more than one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. The motivational thought for the day Rejoice, your future is full of God's promises. On this day, in the year 483, St. Felix III begins his reign as a Catholic Pope. In 1861, on this day, Jefferson Davis signs the bill authorizing the use of slaves as soldiers. In 1930, astronomer Clyde Tombaugh announces the discovery of the planet Pluto. 1935, on this day, voluntary driving tests are introduced into Britain and they become compulsory in June of that year. In 1969, Apollo 9 returned to Earth safely on this day. And in 1995, in Istanbul, Chi police shoot dead 16 Alawitishi demonstrators. Alawitishi, yeah. Not sure how you pronounce it, but something like that. 1996 on this day, Thomas Hamilton killed 16 kindergartners, their teachers, and himself, sadly. Or, oh, not sadly killing himself, but sadly that that event occurred. The personal story of the day, more power to you. Would you like to be more successful in business, in church life? Then remember a person's name. Usually, when we are introduced to someone, we are thinking of how we look or what we will say, and we miss their name. Then, we are too embarrassed to ask again. But the average person is more interested in his own name than anybody else's in the world. Andrew Carnegie built a huge business on steel. He knew very little about steel, but he knew a great deal about men. What he learned about people he learned early in life. When he was growing up in Scotland, he found a mother rabbit. Soon he had a whole box of little rabbits and nothing to feed them. He told all the boys on the block that if they would pick enough dandelions, clover and wild lettuce to feed the rabbits, he would name the little critters in their honour. The boys all jumped at the chance and Carnegie never forgot that principle. There is a name that is above every other name on earth and in heaven. It has the power to save, heal and deliver. It ushers us into the presence of God the Father. It is music to the weary soul. It is rest for the heavy laden. It is wealth for the needy. It is peace for the troubled mind and it is hope for the lost. It is health for the broken body. In Philippians chapter 2 verses 9, 10 and 11 we read, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
to the glory of God the Father. Would you like to be more successful in your prayers, in your fellowship and in your witnessing? Then remember the power available to you in the name of Jesus. Amen to that. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, who do you trust? The scriptures from Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 with references from Jeremiah 49 verses 1 to 39. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. When people think of the roaring twenties, jazz music, fancy cars and carefree days come to mind. People put great confidence in the stock market and it seemed that only progress and prosperity were possible. When the stock market fell 46% in October of 1929, people were shocked. It seemed that the nation had been struck by a fireball in the night, as one historian put it. The kingdoms addressed in Jeremiah 49 probably also felt they had been struck by a fireball when judgment finally came at Nebuchadnezzar's hand. The first kingdom mentioned is Ammon, and which had instigated Gedaliah's murder, thereby bringing Nebuchadnezzar's final wrath upon Judah. Even worse was Ammon's evil god Molech, whose cult included child sacrifice. The next kingdom, Edom, was judged harshly because it was related to Israel through Esau, and it should have helped its brother nation. Ezekiel 25 tells us, however, that when Israel fell in 722 BC, Edom looted the country and refused to help its many refugees. Edom was known for its impenetrable fortresses, such as Petra. Moreover, Edom was used to being feared, but today's verses show that this country would experience a much greater fear, the fear of the Lord. Next is Syria. In addition to Damascus, Hamath and Arpad were key Syrian cities. Ben-Hadad was the name of a god whose worship would crumble like the country's cities. Following this, we find a reference to Kedar and Hazor, which were nomadic eastern tribes. Although isolated, even they would be crushed by Nebuchadnezzar. Finally, we come to Elam, which was a trading nation and a military power on the edge of the Persian Gulf. They too would be brought low. What unified these oracles is that each country relied on its own strength, whether a god, human wisdom, fortresses or military might. They also acted against Israel and rejected God. But as we saw in the last post, these pronouncements of judgments also indicate God's grace. This is especially true for Elam because Acts 2 tells us that those present at Pentecost included Elamites. Today's verse encourages us to make the Lord our first priority. Like Jeremiah, Jesus also warned people to trust only in God and his provision. Both the prophet and our Lord teach us that worshipping false gods or relying on human wisdom and power leads to ruin. Judgment prophecies were intended to bring people back to the Lord by showing them where their actions would ultimately lead. In the same way, Jesus warns us against storing up earthly treasures that will eventually rust and will keep our hearts from the Lord. The second thought for the day, the Lord is his name. And uh, the scripture is from Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. When God revealed himself to his people, he revealed his name. 
A name is more than a mere designation of a person. In biblical times, a person's nature and characteristics were represented in the name. If you knew the name, you knew the person. If you understood the name, you understood the person. God refers to himself as the Lord in many places in the Bible. He is the highest, the omniscient, the almighty. He is the Lord. Hebrews refers to him time and time again as the living God. See Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31 and chapter 12 verse 22. No one is like him. No one is higher than he is. He is the only one who, in the true sense, is living. All life comes from him. He is the Lord. Who can save as he can? Is there anything that he cannot do? He knows everything. He counts all the hairs on your head. If you fled to the uttermost parts of the sea or descended to the darkness of hell, he would still be there. He knows all your thoughts and all your days are written in his book. He formed you in your mother's womb and he carries you on his shoulders. No one is like him. He is the Lord and he ought to be Lord in every area of your life. He can pour out life and blessing over every dry area of your life. He can make the desert bloom. He rejuvenates what was dead. He protects what is weak. He has mercy on those who are depressed, distressed or wounded. The Lord is his name. Call upon the Lord in your distress. He is always with you and he can help you in every situation. Praise the Lord. We spent a couple of moments in thoughts in verse and uh, it fits in with what we've talked about today. It's chorus 344, the name of the Lord. It's only one chorus, but it's one that you can sing over, if you know the word, to this tune, certainly the words you can say or sing over and over to yourself during the day. The words say, The name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. The name of the Lord is a refuge for my soul. The name of the Lord is a pillar I can lean on. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. The facts of the day. Vampire bat saliva has been responsible for many advances in research into stroke recovery. And a baby octopus is about the size of a flea when it is born. That's when the octopus is born, not the flea. The closing thought for today. Lord, teach me to see what you see, to think as you think, and to act as you want me to. What a wonderful thought, and a great aim and goal for the day. Thank you for being with us today. We hope that the Daily Post will help and uplift you through the day. We hope we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Have a blessed day. Bye for now.